Hi everyone, I'm back because I forgot to show you how to export the video that we spent so long painting here. It's a very simple process and it would have been so easy just to put it on the end. But here we go. Uh, the most important thing for exporting is making sure your work area is set to the right length. And right now our work area is a little too long. This is the work area right here. It is this gray bar, two little handles here, left and right. Looks like I'm going to need to set my work area at this frame right here, which is uh, one minute and two, uh, one second and two frames rather. Zoom in here so I can make sure I'm getting it right. Now remember, the playhead sits to the left of the frame, so I need to extend my work area not here but here to capture this last frame. There's no, yeah, there's nothing over here, but right here, that is where we need to be at three frames. It looks like it's at three frames. This is so confusing, I apologize. Just make sure that where your playhead is, the work area is one beyond that. See, this is the frame right here, and the work area encompasses that. So, with our work area set there, everything else set the way we want. I would go in and check my timeline frame rate, but you should have checked that multiple times by now, and it's not going to make any difference at this point. You'll have to repaint everything, lots of frames, if you change it. So, let's just go to File. Export Render Video. File Export Render Video brings up this dialog box, the Render Video dialog box. And I'm going to save my movie as Rototat F17. I'm going to save it to my 280 folder. That's already correct. I could change that if I wanted to. I'm not going to create a subfolder. I am. Well, that's interesting. Adobe Media Encoder. I'm going to leave it there because I don't want an image sequence. Uh, I do want it to be, you know what, just for speed's sake, I'm going to render not to plain QuickTime but to H.264 so that it will already be uh, compressed. I know that the Learning Suite upload limits you to 175 megabytes, so I would, just to cut down on steps, go ahead and export at H.264, high quality, leave everything else the same, make sure your frame rate's right, work area set, and then go ahead and click render. I know that this is going to be a small video because it's only a second long, but if yours gets up there and it is above 175 megabytes, you might need to go uh, the other route and then you can use Adobe Media Encoder to shrink it down more. But that should have done it. Let's uh, check our folder. There we go. That is a 3.4 megabyte video. There we go. Man, seems so short for all the work we put into it, doesn't it? Anyway, that is how you export out of Photoshop. Then you can take that movie into After Effects and add sound or whatever. Oh, another thing I learned in class yesterday from one of my smart students is that you can fade out audio in Photoshop. I have been telling you guys that you need to export this into After Effects. I probably would do that anyways, personally. If I were going to export a video for use in After Effects for layering and sound editing, I would not export to H.264, by the way. I would, let's see. Let's go back into file, export, render video. I would go into Adobe Media Encoder and I would probably just render as QuickTime Animation High Quality. That's going to be a huge video, but I'm going to use the huge uncompressed video in After Effects to edit and then export out of After Effects to whatever format I would like to. So just FYI, if you know you're not going to use After Effects at all, exporting to H.264 is fine. And if you do have audio imported, I'm just going to import a little sound right now. Let's, let's see, drum breaks, that sounds good. You see this little green layer here? That is my audio layer. I can actually fade it out, at least at the end of my time, by right clicking on it. That is the only way I've found to be able to access the audio controls. You can't do it by clicking on the notes here. You have to right click on the layer itself and you can tell it to fade out at however many seconds. So that's awesome. You can fade it in and you can fade it out. You can't keyframe it, you can just tell it, okay, when to fade in and when to fade out. But there it is and you can control the, the volume levels as well. 
So that is all we're going to go over in this appendix to the epic rotoscoping tutorial. Thanks for listening. See you later.